Mike DeCourcy here. No one better to set the stage and the menu as a uh, Big Ten play begins tomorrow with the first round there, two games taking place. And then uh, let's see, ACC begins, I think, today. Yes. Is that what you said, John? Yes, and, correct. Uh, used to be the old Big East getting started because they had 47 teams they had to get through, man. Uh, that was a great. That was a great tournament, though, back when it was the old Big East. That was yes. That was a lovely. That one was. A, I remember watching that six overtime game, sitting in a restaurant in Louisville on Third Street, and it was like at eleven o'clock already because oh. you know they probably started at nine thirty, so it was probably eleven thirty. Oh, it was later than that, Jim. When the first, I'm talking about when the regulation ended. Oh, oh, gotcha, gotcha. And, and so, and I'm like. So now we've got an overtime, and they're like, oh, wow. And then you get another overtime, and I'm like, good Lord, it goes six overtimes. And there was only three of us left. It was me, the bartender, and the cook or something. <laughs> I was like, man, can I, you ain't going to kick me out now or in. So, uh, but, you know, uh, I was at the ACC tournament that year at the Georgia Dome, and I followed that in. You know, we finished up uh, the last game of the day at the ACC tournament, and I was done with whatever work I had to do. And, and so went over to watch the TV in the press area. And and then all of a sudden we're going and going. And I'm worried. And we're all worried about, are, is there going to be a media shuttle when this damn game is over? Because it's like 1.30 in the morning. It's like, are we are we going to be able to get back to the Marriott or whatever? Yeah, it was absolutely nuts. But fun. And that's what makes this time of year so incredible. And it starts with uh, the conference tournaments. As they get started this week, like we said, the Big Ten starts tomorrow. ACC today, SEC tomorrow. Um, Philip uh, asked a question. Oklahoma State, uh, if it's close, should get in. Uh, they had the postseason ban last year. That team had nothing to do with blah, blah. You said you've got them in on your bracket right now. Yeah, I, I, I will tell you, though, on the matrix uh, right now, among, you know, among the, the – the, there are now 107 brackets on the matrix. And out of the 107, Oklahoma State is on 27. They are the next team out for the consensus. Wisconsin is out according to the consensus. I disagree with that. Oklahoma State is out according to the consensus. I disagree with that. One of the things that I will say is that there's a heavy metric orientation to a lot of the brackets that are on there now. And, and so when you get that, you get Utah State and Nevada in the field. But if you do the process the way the committee does it, I mean, there is they, neither of them should be in the field at this point. Uh, Utah State has one quad one win. Why are we yelling at Carolina for having one quad one win and, and giving Utah State a pass? Why would we do that? Uh, Utah State, other than the only thing they have to recommend them is they have great predictive metrics. Now, it hasn't turned in any wins that really matter. Because they, you know, they're looking at one quad one win, as I said, and I think they have at this point they have eight quad two wins. They are twelve and zero against quad three. This ain't the quad three tournament, man. They're two and two against quad four. How is that a tournament team? Well, and yet, look at, as you say, looking at that matrix, it, it has Purdue as the top one seed. They do. Yes, they do. Um, there's just no way that Utah State belongs in this tournament uh, with what they've accomplished. This is what they have done. Their best win is home against Boise State. That's it. That's their best win. They've played no one in quad one that wasn't in their league, and they lost four of those five games. Outside, uh, outside quad one, they lost to San Jose State. Uh, which was which is Tim Miles' team. Congratulations to my guy Tim. Uh, you now the uh, Mountain West Conference Coach of the Year uh, for the turnaround at San Jose State. Their next three best wins are all home games. Nevada, Oral Roberts, New Mexico. Their only win against a Power 5 opponent was against Washington State, which I think finished a game over 500. That's what they're trying to put in the tournament because they have good predictive <laughs> metrics. Save half us the, from that. Half the people don't even have them on the metrics, it looks like. But they are in the field, according to the. Oh matrix. yeah, I see it. They are. They are. In, they are. They are eleven seed, according to the matrix, 
right. because again, reliance on the on on metrics and not on the actual results. You know, the the result based metrics are uh, don't factor in uh, margin of victory and that sort of thing. And even they have them in, but I'm telling you, I just read you their resume. What I mean, what are we doing here? There's 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 nothing there. The good to, thing to is them as a tournament team. The metrics has no uh, no bearing on the actual tournament release, right? No, the metrics are important. The, the committee looks at them. There are five oh, metrics. Do? There are five metrics on the team sheet. Uh, three predictive: Ken Palm, Sagarin, BPI from ESPN. Two results-based metrics, no margin of victory, et cetera, KPI, and strength of record from ESPN. Those five are all on there in addition to the net. Utah State scores well in every one of those. Utah State on the floor doesn't score at all. There's nothing there. I just read you there, there who they've beaten. That is there, that is, you know, it I I there's no way that team belongs in the field. Uh, if they win a conference bid, good, because they don't have to think about it. But if can't if San Diego State, which is by far the best team in that league, goes out and wins the automatic bid as expected, then there's no way that Utah State should be in that in that field. Who in the Big Ten is going to have the toughest time staying in? Uh, Michigan is out, I think, uh, right now, and. You've got, I believe, Wisconsin and Penn State as your last four in. They're like the last two of your last four in, I think. I think the team that has the toughest doing that is Wisconsin. For one, there is, you know, if the committee thinks like the Matrix, uh, then they're out. If they think like me, then they're in. Uh, and, and for me, I think I have them now on the 11 line. So they are the third team from the bottom. There are two teams below them, and those two teams would be Penn State and Oak State. Oak State, the literal last team in. Uh, but because they play Penn, uh, Ohio State in the on the Wednesday, the first day of the Big Ten tournament, that's a tough game. Right now, Ohio State has rediscovered some of what made it a capable team uh, uh, in uh, November, December. They, they, they don't... It doesn't appear they'll have Zed Key, so but they've been able to s sort of recapture some of the good qualities of the team that they were earlier in the season, and, and so uh, that's a tough game for them. And if they lose it, there's no doubt in my mind they're out. They 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 wouldn't be able to get back. They they have to win that game. That's that's a that's that's an elimination game for them, not for Ohio State, but for them.